Hi, my name is Dr. Cheryl Meyer and I'm a psychologist oh, and I love the sun. So I went to wherever I could go in my house right now where the sun was shining. So I help people navigate through their spiritual awakening. All right, so let me, let me stand up on this. Um, so today I'm going back to the hospital. Something happened with one of my children, but I, I look, I have my hospital bracelet, this yellow thing, but I don't, I want to, you know, protect, protect their privacy. But um, needless to say, we don't know. We don't know what's gonna happen in your life and if you have another day to live. So this morning, I, I keep going on with what I've practiced and what I've practiced. It's funny because there are these people that do prayer every day and sometimes I just roll my eyes and I'm like, so annoying how faithful they are. <laughs> If I'm to be honest, you know, but it's so beautiful because when there's times like this, there are the people that I can always turn to and they're always steady, you know, slow and steady wins the race. So anyway, though, um, and going about my daily routine of like, I just finished doing yoga and I was thinking while I was doing it, you know what the hospital needs is they need people that took deep breaths for 45 minutes this morning. <sighs> and um, that's what the priest was saying. He was saying, you know, you don't know what an impact you'll have by having a faithful life. And it doesn't mean you have to have the same faith as mine. I don't believe that. Like, I don't. I'm not here to dictate what religion people ought to be in. I just know what they were teaching this morning was this parable of Christ and it really struck me, you know. <sighs> Jesus, you know, some lawyer come up, came up to Jesus and was saying, hey, um, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Christ said, You know, what does the law say? And he said, love the Lord, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, with everything you have, you know? And, and it was beautiful, like, this is just a side. If, a few months ago, I was doing a roller skating video, you know, because I love roller skating, because it gets you in the flow, it gets you into a meditative state, it makes you creative, it gets you one with music, it helps you surrender everything, it helps you have balance helps you exercise your body and nurture your body and bring love and, and happiness and light to other people. And so um, in that one time, you know, one of the social media platforms suggested a song to me and it was La Vie and Rose. And it says, give your heart and soul to me and your life will always be La Vie and Rose, a beautiful life. A life of roses. I love roses because they're wild and they're beautiful and they smell amazing. And that's all I ever wanted was to have this beautiful life. Because I knew it was in me to create that. And I'm quite a perfectionist, so I couldn't stand. You know, let me leave it gives us a life that wasn't of beauty and love and loving and death. <laughs> but anyway, so he says, so the lawyer guy says to Christ, you know, um, 
love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. And I was taught, I'm part Native American, I was taught by a Native American shaman. <laughs> he was laughing with me one time when we were talking. And he said, love your neighbor as yourself. We are all in the mind womb of God. Mataki Washin, where that's the Cherokee word or Cree word or something. We're in the mind womb of God. Your neighbor is yourself. Your neighbor is yourself. I am you and you are me. But you don't have to understand the depth of that. It took me years to understand what he was talking about. I laughed with him because I could feel it, but I didn't know it. at this right on the wall i'll show you the floor that floor i've cried on a lot i'm in the floor of my own bathroom because this is where the sun would shine sometimes in my <laughs> darkest moments i was like why do you want me to make a video in my bathroom today it doesn't make sense but i realized this is the place i cried on the floor a lot by myself well what it looked like by myself but anyway, so Christ said, you know, well, let me tell you a story. Can I tell you a story or whatever? You know, and the guy's like, yeah, tell me. He usually asks stuff like that, you know. Because I'm like, I'm not going to volunteer. And you don't, you don't have to watch the rest of this video, you know. You can click off. But so he tells him, he says, there's a, there's a man. Maybe I'll set this down so I'm not shaking. There's a man. <laughs> and um, he robbers come along the street and rob this man on his path he's on his normal path There's, there were paths that, that way back then that everyone would go on to, to bring their trades and stuff like that and sometimes people on that path anyway they robbed him took all his stuff and beat him and stripped him of his clothes. And there was a priest that came by and he walked on the other side of him because priests couldn't touch anything that was unclean. In their mind, that was the highest rule, you know? And then uh, a Levite came by and that was a keeper of the law of some way. I forget what the Levite represents, you know, I mean, in that old time, but also it all they all represent a part of ourselves, okay? This is what was shown to me. I was seeing it with my inner eye because I'm deep in presence right now. Because I have to leave in a couple of minutes to go back to the hospital. We were switching off watching and they don't want me to come yet. They're sleeping. So I had an obligation. I'll tell you that in a second. But anyway, what was shown to me was, and then then the Samaritan came. And so a Samaritan was half Jewish, half not. They are outsiders. They are not allowed to worship at the temple. They have been um, misunderstood and misjudged and outcast. And, you know, they, they knew what it was like to be betrayed, to be abandoned, to be left, to be hurting. Anyway, that man got off his donkey, picked up that man and cared for him and poured oil, which is like healing balm, Clean, cleansed his wounds, put him on his own donkey, took him to an inn. And um, told the innkeeper, here, here's money for him. The rest, you know me, I'll pay you back for whatever it takes for him to get better. <sighs> so, of course, we see it's the person, you know, he's Jesus, you know, because the, the lawyer guy had asked Jesus, well, who is my neighbor? And he says, the one, you know, like, no, Jesus asks, who is the neighbor in that situation? <laughs> And he would never want to just say the Samaritan because they didn't even talk about Samaritans. But he's like the one who showed kindness to the man, you know. 
And so I'm encouraging you, because this is what I saw. The priest taught something different, and I listened to what he had to say. But this is just a few minutes ago. They do morning prayer. I was getting ready to do this video, and I was just listening to that first, being present with them in this community. Does it over, you know, over Zoom? <laughs> anyway. I saw that we are the ones that beat ourselves so often. We are the ones that strip us of our own clothes and leave us on the side of the road. We beat ourselves up when we keep taking ourselves back to the same familiar patterns and addictions and betrayals, betraying our own hearts, betraying love by taking some kind of shortcut or whatever, you know, that I roll my eyes at. The, you know, the people that are slow and steady, that bring balance into my life, you know, that bring love. I mean, I still think I need to be wild and passionate like the rose, you know, and skate my heart out <laughs> and, and do what I do. But there's also this part of us that's, oh, I'm too religious to look at that broken part of me. I'm going to keep her broken, you know? I'm going to keep him broken and just leave him on the side of the road and act like this great person that has all these great things and blah, blah, blah. You know, so we are the Levite and the priest that's like, no, I don't want to touch that. That will get me dirty. That will make me feel bad again, you know? But what I want you to know, and this is why I'm making this, is because I have a life coach session today in the middle of the day. I'm going to step out for a little bit. And, and But she told me, you know, uh, you know, we made a commitment last last time we met that I would I would make a video talk about, um, you know, because she asked me why why people were going to. And this is not an advertisement. OK, I'm just fulfilling what what she said is like, why are people going to take this master class that you created? And I'm like, because, you know, she said, why you and what are you bringing? And I'm like, why me? Because I have been the one on the floor crying. I'm also the one that's been a psychologist for over 20 years now. And I've seen clients and why me? Because I have compassion. Why me? Because I'm funny <laughs> and I bring light and um, I'm loving and because I couldn't take it. I wouldn't take living like that. I wouldn't take betraying myself. I wouldn't accept living in heartbroken energy anymore. So the only way I knew how to bring healing that was even above all of the hundreds of thousands of dollars I've spent myself on my own training, getting my doctorate, and going to therapy and paying for programs and going through all of that was going back to the power of now and, and reading Eckhart Tolle's book and applying it in my life. And so that's what I did. That's me being the good Samaritan to myself going, you know what, I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to put you on this donkey and I'm going to love you and I'm going to keep loving you and I'm going to find anything that truly works. And it's strange because I have, you can't tell right now, but I, you know, I do this. Like I went from a size 12 to a, I'm a size four. These pants are a size four. And I tell people, this is what I did. I did this six days a week. I did this, I did this. And it's like, you know, just let go of your excuses because if they started doing that and started doing this daily practice, their, their lives would transform. They would have more breath in their life, more presence for when situations like this happen. All I could do was sit in presence and I'm like, well, I know how to surrender really well. <laughs> anyway, I wish you love. Don't, I don't care if you sign up for my class or not. I just want you to know you're loved and you ought to be the person that picks yourself up and cares for him, cares for her enough to teach you how to walk away from your addictions and stop betraying yourself to other things and lesser things and lesser people and lesser ideas and more and less let go of your excuses all right i wish you so much love